Hey guys, Jason Sensational here. Today I have another deck guide for you guys. Um, unfortunately, this time on again one of the more popular decks, but this deck was the deck that I mainly used for my more the ranks anymore platinum to diamond grind, and it performed extremely well um, with some of the new tools given in the recent stream expansion. And of course, if you guys have been playing a lot of ladder, you'll know that Fiora Shen has become another really, really dominant force in the meta. To no one's surprise, really, this deck has kind of been around for pretty much the inception of the game. But today, I finally want to cover for it because I've actually spent the time to play it in depth. And with the recent expansion, I found it to actually be, you know, pretty good. And I've actually quite enjoyed playing it myself. So without further ado, I just want to ask you guys to subscribe to the channel, like the video, everything like that. We're actually growing really quickly over the past couple of days, so I'm really excited for that. We just hit 200 recent a while ago, and we're slowly climbing our way to 1k. But enough of the rambling, let's jump into the guide, let's go. To start things off, we're going to go over the deck list and what exactly has changed since the new stream expansion. Of course, I think that there are maybe like 20, 30-ish cards that you'll see in pretty much every single list of Fiora Shen, even across all the different expansions. That cards like 3x Fiora, 3x Shen, of course, 3x Bright Steel, 3x River Shaper for the most part, 3x Screeching Dragon, um, and you know, um, there's always going to be at least Green Glade Caretaker. Sometimes you see like the Fleetwing Tracker. Uh, sometimes you see like two Scythria, two Bright Steels, or even like a Tian at the late end. And then of course all your combat tricks, your three singles, three sharp sights, two denies, a repose, refuge, and of course concern strike. The deck itself is very, very standard. You probably see a lot of decks similar to this. And what makes Fear Shen really good as a deck is it can be very flexible depending on the matchups that you want to face. If you want to tech it more against an aggro deck, you can put in like Fleetwing Trackers, uh, add in more one drops, you can put in more Spirits Refuge. If you're facing more mirrors, you might want to go a little bit bigger with more Bright Seal Protectors, maybe more combat tricks type of things. If you're in a meta that no find deny aren't really good, well guess what? You can just cut them or replace them with other cards. And um, just having very, very flexible deck slots in this deck, and while still retaining the main core of Fiora and Shen, and just playing very, very reactively with barriers, makes this deck very, very powerful, especially within Legends of Runeterra. The one card that I will talk about here, because it is new and has been added since the stream expansion, is the card Golden Aegis. It's a 4-mana rally spell. Um, it's basically the same thing as a Relentless Pursuit, but you get a barrier on top of it for one extra mana. And that has just made this deck so very, very strong. It was like the missing piece in the puzzle to just really push it through. And we've seen the power level of this deck during the expansion just really, really take off. And I think partly to having this card printed for the deck. But without further ado, let's go into you know how to play the deck, what it's all about and how to really do well with it. The first topic I want to cover is probably one of the more basic ones. It's just kind of what you're looking for in a mulligan. Because Fiora Shen is not only flexible in its deck slots, what cards you kind of want to run in it, it's also very flexible into different matchups because I think Fiora Shen as a deck concept as a whole, and we can cover this a little bit more in the, in the later slides, is that it doesn't really have very polarizing matchups. There aren't very ma many matchups that feel really bad for Fiora Shen, but on the flip side, there aren't really matchups that Fiora Shen just completely dominates. But this does allow us to be a little bit more flexible when we want to mulligan against like an aggro deck versus a control deck. Um, there are some similarities to it. I think that you'd always want to, if you see Fiora Shen in your hand, it's almost always a good keep. Sometimes, and you have to take this with a little bit of grain of salt against maybe like a super hyper aggro deck maybe Shen might even be too slow. It really depends on your hand state, how comfortable you are with the matchup, how comfortable you are with playing the deck, and things like that. But in general, against aggro decks, you might consider keeping an earlier curve. My version of the deck runs one Tasty Fey Folk as kind of a tech against aggro. And so because I include it as one of my anti-aggro cards, of course I'm going to be looking for it and keeping it. 
Um, other cards you could keep, uh, obviously your early units, Green Glade Caretaker, Bright Sail Protector. If you need, and if you have a good early curve, you can start thinking about, oh, do I want to keep Sharp Sight? Do I want to keep like Spirit's Refuge and other cards to help you stabilize and push it forward to your win condition? Now against a control deck, this mainly being a deck like TLC in the recent meta, which is the Trundle Lissandra control deck, you are of course again looking for Fiora and Shen, but this time you're looking for either some of your more value-oriented cards, which are River Shaper, or some of your more bulky, beefy Demacia mid-range cards that um, a SI for your deck that mostly runs AoE cards have a hard time dealing with, and these are of course Screeching Dragon and Cythria the Bold, very uh, hard units for them to remove unless they use like a Vengeance and you know help apply a lot of mid game pressure. And of course, against any kind of control deck, your rallies are going to be some of your strongest tools to really apply pressure for a not very expensive commitment to it. And of course, in this version of the deck, it is Golden Ages. But again, one of the issues with a card like Golden Ages, and any rally in the, for that matter, is if you don't have a commanding board state advantage over your opponent, these rally cards become a little bit of a brick in your hand. And so when thinking about how you're mulling against a control deck, if you do have a good mid-range curve, if you have like a 3, 5, 6, uh, keeping a rally can seem alright. But that's really, again, up to your feel for the matchup, your feel for the hand, and kind of how your draws go. The next concept I want to cover is one that also makes Fiora Shen a really interesting deck. I think one thing that if you've been around the community for a while or just interacting with people if you're a new player, is if you ask people what's a good deck to play as a beginner, I think 9 out of 10 times someone will say Fiora Shen. And there's two reasons for that. I think Fiora Shen can teach you a very very easy way of just playing for tempo. You can play on curve units because you're a Demacia deck and still do relatively well. You can play how to play for tempo, you know, get value trades with your challenger and things like that. But as you get more advanced, you now get to dive into the world of how you want to play reactively with Fiora Shen, how you want to force your opponents to be proactive, and then have all the tools to really take advantage of that point. And so I want to take this concept and really look into it. And there's this very, very simple thing that a lot of people could overlook when thinking about this, is how exactly you want to be curving out and when you can be banking this mana. For this particular example i will only be looking at the first three turns but you can take this mindset further on based on your hand state and the minions you have in hand so on the left we have a quote-unquote beginner's curve it's a curve that's just played on curve you play for tempo you play it for your minions and that's that and then we have the more advanced curve which you are going to be passing on turn two even if you have bright steel protector the reason for this is that Something very, very important about Fiora Shen is the ability to play reactively. And in order to play reactively, you need to have mana for your spells. And so what passing on turn 2 to bank 2 spell mana does for you is this opens up your reactivity. Unless you are a deck with Chain Vest, for example, 2 mana is the minimum you need in order to have an option to react to your opponent with. So for example, this could be either Nopify or Sharp Sight. So let's take a look at the beginner curve. You play 1, 2, 3, and then you have 0 spell mana on turn 3 with Fiora down on board. Your opponent get excited or thermo beams your Fiora, and they kill it, and you can't protect it. Now say you have the same example again, but on turn 3 you have 2 spell mana. Now your opponent can't really commit to that, otherwise they could get nopified, they could get sharpsided, and then that's all their mana. And then next turn on turn 4, you back, you're back to 4 spell mana, and you have that reactivity again. And so this is why Fiora Shen is so hard to deal with, because every time you have mana up, your opponent has a really, really hard time kind of trying to play around every single play that you could possibly have. Another note, just in very particular to Bright Seal Protector, is that Bright Seal Protector is almost never a 2-drop in this deck. Only into very specific aggro hands will you consider playing this on 2, but the barrier that it provides is just also so important into playing reactive reactively. You can play this on 4, onto your Fiora on 3, and then attack with Fiora and gain reactivity because you now have a barrier. 
And so I think this is a very important concept to grasp. But even if, if you're a beginner, you can just simply play out for tempo and still do all right. But as you get more advanced with this deck, you slowly have to think about when you want to be banking this mana and how you want to use it, which is a topic of the next slide we have here. So of course, how do you play for reactivity? And I think that the easiest way to really think about this is when you're attacking, you want to keep your spell mana up. What I mean by this is that you have ways of being reactive when you attack. So the easiest way is either you have Shen on board and then or you have you play Bright Sail Protector and now you have a barrier on hopefully a challenger unit. And so you can open an attack with reactivity up and spell mana up because being able to react to whatever your opponent wants to do, especially on your attack turn, is very, very important. So the first part is always to keep your options up. You want to be planning ahead of what's kind of in your hand and what your opponent can do. So the more mana your opponent has, the more things that they can do. So the more mana you have to hold up so that you can play around whatever your opponent can do. Excuse me. Um, this is also really important because your deck is actually quite light on units. It's more heavy on combat tricks compared to a lot of other decks like an overwhelm mid-range deck or like an aggro deck for that matter. So you want to be trading your reactive combat trick cards for their proact or like their reactive removal cards. You do not want to be trading your units for their removal cards because now you're trading down units and your units are much more important and your reactive cards need to have a unit in play to even use and so this is kind of the basic trading concept you don't want to be trading units you want to be trading reactive tools and so because you want to always be keeping your options up in order to make these trades you have to think about what's in your hand what your opponent can do and what's a safe mana point that you need for this turn in order for your unit to survive Another very, very important thing is even if you don't have the reactive tools in hand, you still need to keep your mana up to bluff your opponent into thinking that they can't commit to it. So if if you only have like a Nopify in hand, you don't want to be dropping down a two mana because now they know that you can only have Nopify in hand. And this changes the amount of information you're giving to your opponent and also limits in like making their decision easier for them, which isn't something that you don't want to be doing. And so even if you don't only have two mana of spells in hand, maybe you want to consider keeping four mana up so you can cast both Nopify and Sharp Sight, or even six mana up so your opponent has to think that oh, I have to get through a Nopify, I have to get through a Deny, for example. The second part of the aspect is, uh, is the other hand, is knowing when you're safe to develop because in the end of the day you are still a mid-range deck, you have a lot of bulky beefy units that you do want to play on curve, uh, well not necessarily on curve but eventually. And so you have to know when you're safe to develop and I think that knowing when you can develop, especially on an, an attack turn, is very very difficult because you have first action, meaning that if you suddenly just play a unit first on your attack turn, you're down mana and your opponent has all their mana up. And so now they have more mana than you, they can play more reactively and you don't want to do that. So the very first thing is to not tap out before your opponent. This might even result in soft passing at the start of your attack turn to see if your opponent's going to do something and then develop. But of course, if your opponent knows that they might pass back. So I think the safest play here is to prioritize your development on turns that you're not attacking. And this will uh, help you because you'll generally have reactivity because on your opponent's attack turn, they might play something first and then that allows you to play something while still having your mana up in order to counter your opponent's mana up. The second aspect is to kind of know, this is where understanding your opponent's deck is really, really important. If you have a good board, you're playing against a Shadow Owls deck, and let's say you play Cythria on board. If they can only, if the worst play for you is a Ruination, but you have a Deny in hand, then you can play Cythria, because if they cast Ruination, you cast Deny and you win the game. Alternatively, if you're trading for like a one to one for like a deny for or for like a vengeance, for example, then at that point you're betting, oh, okay, if they have vengeance, then we just trade one for young units. I still have a board advantage and they're down mana, that's okay. Or if they don't have vengeance, I just win. And these are some bets that you can take uh, and you can think about when it's safe to develop. 
but this is only comes when you have a really good understanding of your opponent's deck and what they can play and if you can feel okay about playing into what they can play. Does that sound familiar? This is Fiora Shen, guys. And then, of course, I want to talk a little bit about some of the matchup spreads. I think that this is very important when it comes to a very meta strong meta deck, and I want to cover some of the good matchups and kind of the bad matchups. The first one is TF Fizz. This is a pretty contested topic. I think that you can easily tech Fiora Shen in a way that is at least 50 50 or slightly favorable into tf fizz by playing like tiana over crown guard by playing more spirits refuge by playing like um maybe playing a little bit earlier things like that but overall i think this is a tough matchup if you don't draw fiora you might have a slightly harder time winning this matchup because fiora is kind of one of your main key win conditions into fizz tf Second topic I want to cover is the mid-range piles. Even though this might not be a very popular concept within the meta right now, it is probably one of the matchups Fiora Shen is the best into. And this can include like a Renekton Sege, LB Severe, or any type of mid-range deck out there, maybe apart from like Ash Nox. Fiora Shen does really, really good into it because their deck either relies on like overwhelms or like quick attackers and you have cards like barriers to really just challenge them down and they usually have very little interaction with your barrier cards making these matchups often very very favored next of course is tlc which is your Toronto lissandra control deck and i think that fiora shen usually has a pretty good matchup into these um, recently, TLC has been cutting down some of their more expensive control tools like Ruinations and Vengeances, so your denies don't necessarily have the best hits, but with a good mid-range beef that those decks can't deal with that great, and with tools like Rallies, this matchup should be favored into Fiora Shen. Now I have lost a couple of TLC matchups, because I think cards like Blighted Ravine and Three Sisters make it a little bit worse, but overall I think Fiora Shen is favored here. And then lastly, we have our Targon Piles. I'm going to put this at a 50-50, but again, I think that it can go both ways relatively easy. You have your cards. Yeah, because Fiora Shen is somewhat follower dependent, you have very strong tools like River Shaper, Scythria, things like that. Targon Piles can like Equinox or Scythria, Calibrum your River Shaper. And this can allow them to snowball ahead in board and advantage pretty quickly. So you have to be very, very conscious of the fact that your units are relatively vulnerable against most target piles. And try to play a little bit more champion-centric and then play units when it's only safe to and then capitalize on your rallies. Because again, target piles have a really hard time stopping your rallies, much like TLC does. So these are kind of like the basic matchup threats across the table, and kind of where Fiora Shen falls into the meta right now. So of course, lastly, like any of the deck guides I put out there, I have a couple of games that I want to showcase for you guys, because I think that Fiora Shen is one of those decks that you really can't understand how to play it that greatly until you play it for yourself and of course the games i have for you guys were all played on stream so there's going to be a little bit of noise in regards to me either talking to chat or anything like that but i think that i do a good job in showcasing exactly which turns i think about how much spell man i keep up what cards i'm looking to draw into and how they beat win the game and i hope that you guys find that part of this guide really really helpful because of course i think that is the core part of how you can play fjord shen but without further ado i'll leave you with the games and i hope that you guys enjoyed the deck and the in the slides and everything like that if you did again please feel free to leave a comment down below to tell me what you enjoyed if you did also please subscribe and like the video it helps me a lot and without further ado i'll catch you guys next time and enjoy the games against like TLC whereas like ideally Fiora Shen is supposed to be favored into these lists but I found that these lists have adapted strikingly well into dealing with Fiora Shen is this crazy of a keep it's like a 70s kung fu movie <laughs> Um, so this is an interesting keep. We want to keep our units because they're so important. Question is, do we keep Sharpside? Sharpside just has a heal too, seems fine.
What makes DLC a lot better into Fior Shen this expansion is the fact that they now have Blighted Ravine. Because now, because what Blighted Ravine does is that you can't like barrier your unit as to like you could with Avalanche. Because the barriers are round end and Blighted Ravine is round start. So Blighted Ravine single handedly kind of just carries this matchup. This deny draw has been really good. So now we have Fiora Shen on board with a deny backup. This is kind of like a really good spot for this deck. Um, and a Nopify, so that's good. So Nopify saves the barrier. We also have like Sharp Side if we need it. So we want to have Deny up this turn and maybe like a Nopify. If we play like Green Glade, we're losing some interactivity and not gaining very much. Playing Green Glade deals three. This matchup actually like, you actually need to kill them. This isn't necessarily the matchup where Fiori gets to level up. And so I might actually be inclined into playing this Green Glade. But playing the Green Glade, we can still Deny Nopify or Deny Sharp Sight. And that could be enough. <laughs> On the topic of like Glide Ravine Glint Horn, I actually tried like a Ice Shard Glint Horn deck. I know we're like optimized or anything like that, but it was not great. But I I finally didn't have Glide Ravine in the deck, so that's probably like the reason why it was bad. So this is awkward. Um, if I don't Nopify this, or so I can either Sharp Sight or Nopify, right? If I sharp sight this, this goes down at 2 health, and then he can just either Blighted Ravine or Avalanche. Worst case, he has Blighted Ravine, and I have no way of protecting my Fiora. So I actually have to Nopify this, which is fine, because there's not really good Nopify targets in this matchup. But in some cases, you might be like... Okay, that's a little awkward. So now, I'm gonna single combat. Again, if I played Sharp Sight here, this goes down at 2 health, and he could just have Blighted Ravine. And now, in this case, it still goes down at 2 health, but if he does have Blighted Ravine, or even Avalanche, I still have Sharp Sight, I don't have to deny. Like, you never want to deny an Avalanche, that's like the one thing you really need to watch out for. And they can kind of force you into these tough spots. So if he has the Blighter Ravine, I might be inclined to Sharp Sight. Knowing he has neither makes me really, really happy. And I don't want to play Caretaker into one. So this is actually a good spot for me. Because he played Trundle, I can safely play Cythera. And this allows me to push a lot of damage. And denies him the attack from Trundle. At the same time, I'm also threatening my Fior level up. I could Sharp Sight kill Trundle, but he could have like another Ice Shard or something along those lines. I think pulling here... I could even not pull. I could do something like this. And then he's kind of forced... No, that's, that shouldn't be correct. This is interesting. Alright, where were we? Um, wow. So, we could even develop because he can't ruinate. If we develop, we have 5 mana, which only leaves us with deny. And then we have to deny vengeance, and then he could have ice shard. So that might be a little bit risky. We can play Green Glade here, though. And then that might give me, like, if he plays Lissandra now, I can punish him. I might also want to kill Trundle here. Because next turn he plays Ice Pillar, and that could just be a pain to deal with. I think he's kind of forced into blocking with Trundle this turn, though. So I could just do this. And then he's kind of forced into blocking with Trundle, then I can, like, rip off Sharp Sight. 
The only downside is I'm not leveling Fiora, which maybe I don't have to, because Fiora's not winning me the game here. For that reason, maybe I'll supposed to barrier here, because now I'm like splitting. I'm splitting really weirdly. I'm gonna sharp sight here. Because leaving these at 4-4 four, four is just really awkward into the trundle, right? I should have put this here, which would have made this a uh, 6-3, and left Fiora as like a non-barrier. That would have been correct. Oh. Interesting. I just want to make sure that I wasn't missing lethal there somehow. That's fine, we'll trade. We could sharp sight. Leaves Shen at 2 health. Mm, I don't think I do. I think I'm pretty happy with this trade. It's not very clear which one would have been right. That's a really good draw. So again, we can play reactively here. We can actually play this because if he like runates, we have deny. And I always wanna I wanna set up an open attack this turn because I have fearsome and none of his board can block, right? So I can play around I have a deny here, so there's not really anything I'm scared about. So I should just play the dragon here. And then I have deny sharp sight mana. The issue is he could play a card that kills. Interesting. This is fine. Because now if he wants to challenge here, I have Repost. And if he eye shards, I have Sharp Sight. This is another reason why I didn't sharp sight Shen, even though I didn't know that he was running this in his deck, necessarily. Mm, actually, this is awkward, because if we do this, we don't actually have lethal. Because he just blocks here. If we develop, we're not actually getting punished, right? There should be very little that can punish this develop. Because if he avalanches me, I deny the avalanche, and then he can't ruinate me. And I actually need a kill in this turn. I think it's very important to kill in this turn. If I draw a rally off this river shaper, that's gonna win me. This actually does nothing. Oh, it gives his Nexus tough, which is cute. This is kind of interesting. I could kill it here, and then he has the block here, and then I could just Sharp Sight here. So the... interesting. He's gonna freeze this? We have to play this very carefully. Wow, Repost doesn't even do it here. Okay, so I buff this by 5. Doesn't even die. That is tough. Alright, so we're going to slow it down. We're going to take this game one more turn.
This still leaves us the chance to draw a Golden Aegis. And then we can just kill Lissandra that way. No, his Nexus had tough. We're still not winning the game here. But we are threatening to really dish out some damage. Sorry, I'm, I'm, oh my god. Sorry, I'm concentrating really hard here. He's dead. Yeah, so he has three sisters too. So if I went all in, I would have been punished by three sisters. Okay. I can win this matchup. 61 extra damage, yeah. That's how I win the matchup. And this is okay card. No, it's not. So ideally we would find like a sharp sight, double Fiora is pretty good. See if he has turn 1 Fizz. He does not have turn 1 Fizz. <laughs> That's not bad. Mm. So if we don't float this 1 mana, how are we punished? We don't really have way of getting punished. I am one with the land. Witness the fiction, <laughs> Hmm. No, no. Oh, get up. If I get gatekeep by Fizz Tia, that's gonna feel kind of bad. I would have really liked like a Nova Fire Sharp Sight. Like, this hand is actually like two unit heavy, which you don't hear me say often about this stuff. If he doesn't attack, I'm pretty happy. If I play Fiora, actually it's it's good to play Fiora here because if he if he get excited to me, even though I don't have an answer of protecting it, I can just replay second Fiora. <laughs> Shen here would have been really nice. This is his uh, TF turn, so we'll be a little patient. He could like gold card my my Fiora, and then I might be forced into playing Lauren Chevalier. But we can just let him pass for a bit. He's not threatening us anytime soon, and so we have the inevitable like mid game. Like if we can, if we can develop a board and then play Scythia, he can't really block that, and we don't really care about this path. That's a really good card. If he's not threatening us, we don't really care because he has to kill us. There's no real reason not to play Shen here because there's no real way we can be like super. Um, we can. Uh, there's no like spell combination that we really need to handle like a TF. And he's realizing he actually has to push damage now. Like he can't just like ballistic bot me all day. Can you improve 
protection. Ooh. Here's where things get interesting. If I play Scythia, I'm locked out of barrier, so I don't want to do that. So, this is good. I play Screeching Dragon, and I still have a barrier to protect something, or if something dies, I can just replay, like, Fiora, for example. <clears throat> but Dragon Statline is just so good. <clears throat> and at this point, he's waited way too long to, like, play his TF. Not that TF is no longer a threat by any means, but, like... I think he slow played this a little too hard. The only other explanation is his hand is just bricked. <clears throat> He's still soft passing, which is kind of strange. I think because we have Scythria, we could just like kill him in one turn. And so like, I might be inclined to just pass again here. These passes are going to seem really strange. Like, this isn't a deck that can just kill you with 2 damage a turn and a Ballistic Bot. I mean, they could, but don't get me wrong, they definitely can. But I have Scythia and, like, other big threats. And the only minion that can block a Fearsome right now is this 5-3. And if he's, like, blocking Elusives... My guys, because I'm in Demacia, right? I'm, like, guaranteed to get better trades. Ditch is a suit-up, too. Again, I'm in a very comfortable spot. He's probably in need of needing to play cards here. I have Scythria next turn to open attack and deal a lot of damage. I think I can take this pass again. Sharp Sight's really good. Sharp Sight was like the thing I was missing. I have a sharp sight. He has these dumb guys. He actually he's actually milling a card if he doesn't play anything. Like a real card. Three, six, eight. So he gets two ignitions next turn and he's burning a card. Even if he plays ignition here, he still has to play another card. And he's not gonna miss an attack. <laughs> so we can he he is soft passing all day, and we don't really care. Well we kind of care. We wanna play a unit this turn, most likely. But I have like, I have Spirit's Refuge, and so like this chip damage here doesn't really matter. I can like, heal 6, right? The moment he plays something, if he plays an Elusive, that's gonna signal that he's going in for an attack, right? Like, again, he has to be, he has to attack this turn. Well, not necessarily this turn, but like he has to be setting up a situation where he can kill me with Elusive damage. And it's not this turn. And there's the Twisted Fate. He's been holding on to this Twisted Fate since turn 1. Soak it in. So because he played Twisted Fate, he might pick a card. So I'm inclined to keep at least Concerted Mana up this turn. Which means I can't play Thithria. Which is a little awkward. I would have really liked to play Thithria this turn. But because there's a threat of pick a card, I'm gonna keep my mana up. I mean, it's not an easy matchup by any means. And it's not, I think, it's very, it's very unclear when the right turn for him to play Twisted Fate is. Because their deck still relies on leveling up Twisted Fate to a certain extent. But because I am playing so heavily around him leveling up Twisted Fate, it's actually really hard for him to play in a way that you could say is correct. And now not only did he ditch like a pick a card, he has one fleeting card in hand. He's on a he's still burning a card. Um, well, I guess he's not because he has a fleeting card now. And I am going to concert it this right now.
So this is like a this is like the most optimal way. If Fiora gets the strike, uh, I get one out of two on here. But if he's get excited, it's my Fiora. I still got the Fury proc on my dragon. And now after Fiora kills another unit, Fiora's gonna level up and now he's on an actual threat of not only my Fiora leveling, but him just dying to my board. And yeah, I agree, he's played this game way too slowly. Like, now he's just discarding burn and pick a card. But now I have to be a little careful. I do have this one Spirit's Refuge, so I need to use it next turn. Uh, I can actually die to burn, which is awkward. Because he has two of these, I need to open attack. This is actually a little awkward. Um, I want to, like, Spirit's Refuge and Repost on a unit that's not getting blocked, right? I might have misplayed by Concerted Striking that turn instead of Sharp Sighting Killing an Elusive, but it's... Oh, crap. Um, wait, we fucked up. Wait, wait, wait. Um, hold on. So, oh. All right. Um, sorry about that. We screwed up, too. Oh, I got lost in the train of thought. Damn, that sucks. Um, yeah, we just. Uh that's not- uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, that was really bad on me. I should have just opened, like, Repoth into- Yeah, I'm sorry, this was bad on my side. So I'm not dead yet, but it's so likely as ways of killing me. We're just mind gaming each other now. We're like, we're like, he might have burn, but I have like, I might have like refuge into single, or I might have like a way to just win the game with Fiora. So he actually has to be careful because we're in this mana disparity. Yeah, so he has to be careful here. And I have to be careful here. This Nobify is really huge. Now he only has one Ballistic Bot, he actually can't kill me with Ballistic Bots alone. So he either has to attack or have burn in hand. That's not burn. Unfortunately, I don't know if we're healing enough. Wow, this is crazy complicated. I made a mistake last turn, and he and that co might have cost him the game. This is his correct attack order. Good on him. Exactly. Uh, Shen's not. I'm gonna barrier on Green Glade. Never lost a fair game. Oh. Damn. All right, unlucky. Um. Yeah, we made a misplay there. Unfortunately. I don't know if it's because we took the game too slow, especially because we didn't have like a rally in hand. Or the fact that, I mean, we kind of, we didn't draw like any like single combats or things like that. If we had that, maybe we would have won. I think there was a turn where we just had it clear his board and that might have been wrong on my part. It's really hard to tell. I'd have to watch that back to really know. What the hell? This guy's in gold one? Oh man, I don't want to be a bully. Hopefully this is a good matchup. He has really like wide early aggression and so... If we land a Fiora down, we could be in a good spot. This is not bad either. Shen is good. Floating on turn 1 doesn't do us much. We just need to float 2, which we do, and then we have mana for sharp side on river. 
Unhelpful Yoda. Thank you for the follow. Trying to bully some gold players. Being at 1 health versus 2 health might be negligible unless he's running Vile Feast. Which. Who knows? I think attacking here is always wrong, but I'm taking a risk on what's inside his deck. And if he does, we don't save it. If I can queue into three more... Two more gold players after this, that'd be nice. I want to get out of Plot. Plot's a nightmare. Interesting, he passes. I, I definitely want to get Valley out of this. What's the punish here? There's very little punish, you could do like a glimpse block. We'd be scared of like a single, huh? That was a glimpse. So we know that card's a glimpse. Oh, Bow Feast. Never mind. Um Alright, we'll we'll save it. Black Spear is the punish? Somewhat. I mean, if I attack into Black Spear, I get the spell right. And then he black spears me. Otherwise he just slays his own dude, then black spears me, and I don't get the spell. It's very important that I get the spell. So he's running Vile Feast though, that's good information. It means that we made a stupid play earlier. We can play Shun here. The eye of Twilight sees all. Wow, that's a card. I want to protect Shen here so that when it hits the 4 1, it can't die to some random crap. I don't think I want to play Green Glade here, it just gets chumped out by the spiders. I can play it next turn with Golden Aegis. Um, actually, that's not true. I can play this, play this, and have mana for single. I just don't have to necessarily attack with it. Okay. Ooh. This is good because I can single Thresh with like the Green Glade soon. Like, I could single this turn, and like, single the River Shaper into the 4-1 just for value, but I think I need to say the single to either kill or protect- or kill the Thresh to protect- or like, protect River Shaper. And I have these 5-2s, right? I have a lot of good stuff in hand. Fior is a really good draw as well. Yeah, yeah, who cares? So what's the most important card to protect here? I think that card is River Shaper, and this uh, this enables me to single Thresh, right? So as long as we make sure Thresh doesn't like level up, it's really hard for him to do anything. And we have single Sharp Sight for that. We can also single into Aegis, depending on what he does. So we single this here now, because this is the obvious drag from him, but we single here and he could like Black Spear me. And I wouldn't have a way of stopping that, unfortunately. We just don't single this because of the Vile Feast. We'll play around Vile Feast. He's only played one. Come, come. Why is he attacking with this? Vile Feast? He's only attacking this because he's representing Vile Feast, right? Because he knows I'm going to block here. Or he's representing sh like a uh, black spear because he might think I block with Shen. So either way, I think him thinking about that means he has some sort of removal. I just hope it's not black spear.
But yeah, to anyone anyone new, we're playing some Fiora Shen. It's been really fun, actually. I've been really enjoying the deck. Um, I haven't actually played like Fiora Shen that much. That's unfortunate. If we had like a second single or something else, we could also deny that. Ooh, Slash is leveling. That's not good. Um. Okay, that kind of sucks. We have a double attack next turn. Damn, that really sucks. Thresh leveling is not great. So we just need to kill Thresh next turn, which we actually can't do very well. I'm inclined to Golden Aegis now, because then my River Shaper still has Barrier, and this just applies a lot of pressure. Is this correct? When do I... do I do it next turn or this turn? I think I do it now while he's tapped out of anything, but it's hard. It could go both ways. Um, and yeah, it's not- not only is it fun, it's doing well, really well. I am like- I'm probably close like 27 right now. Something ridiculous. Okay, so this being down of if he blocks, like here, I can challenge it with Fiora, or like Fiora Sharp Side. So I think it's correct for him not to block here, but he's taking a lot of damage on the upside. Can Surge Strike kill Thresh? And we have mana... Ooh, that's a card. Because our health total is so high, we're actually not very worried about Gnosis coming out. This unfortunately means that we can't like... That's annoying. Um, we actually want to play out all our cards, right? We'll protect River. Sh so we'll protect River Shaper, then we'll protect Fiora. My shield is yours. Honor dictates both our actions. And we'll drag the. We can actually drag Thrash with Sharp Sight. So if we do this, and we do this... Let's see... If we can Sharp Sight... We'll let him declare his blocks first, and see if he wants to do anything on the stack, before we commit to it. And if you like Vile Feast here, at least I trade with Thresh, and then he can't play Thresh out this turn, and so I don't think there's any disadvantage to it. Oh, he's still dead. Cool. Alright, I, di I didn't plan for him to be dead, but... This actually forces him to do something, so now we get to decide whether or not we want to... Okay, so now that we know that we can't, like, push lethal damage with a sharp sight, we'll just kill Thrash. So, another thing, like, if you threaten them with lethal they kind of actually have to do something, which this deck really likes, because then they have to play proactively, and you can play reactively. And now next turn I just drop this, and like, he's doomed. Oh, one more turn. Alright, I have all the protection tools in the world. He can't drop anything, just gets obliterated. Yeah, who cares. He needs to put us some chump blockers. He's actually still dead to an open. That's a funny card. He's still dead to an open. If he has like another whale, that'd be kind of funny. Not like funny enough, but like that'd be really tragic of me. Because he could draw like a second whale, um, I mean we could play Bright Steel and we don't need to like go for an open. And then he plays one card, I have a six white board, he can't do anything about it. So there's no real reason to commit this concerted strike. You can just play Bright Steel and win. That's also a good card. Oh, um, yeah. 
All right. We're actually just bullying the gold players back out. Gatekeeping gold players from diamond or plat. 